Hi everyone. So it's um, 2024, and I, you know, I want to talk about this idea of uh, music and how, you know, what makes good music, right? So um, the, you know, when we think about music, we are talking about how, um, you know, we're talking about the composition of the of the soundtrack right the, the instruments that are together but then also the, the lyricism right so all of that comes together and i think sometimes you know we focus on the lyricism right like some artists they are lyrically based right and and then there are some artists who and but i think you know some of the greatest you know comp composers some of the greatest musicians um, so, with some people, it's the performance, right? You know, I think of people like, you know, uh, I think of like the Beatles. I think of, you know, the great composers, um, you know, even like I would even classify like Rodgers and Hammerstein, the, you know, people who were able to to make music and compose music at the same time. And a lot of them were trained in theater as well, right? You know, like the Barry Manilow or, or just, you know, a lot of artists, most artists, I guess I would say from the 70s, 80s, you know, they, they, they kind of, um, they either performed it or they, they were writing their own music as well. And so, um, you know, when I think of music today, right? Like what, what makes good music? And when we um, and try to answer that question, the way I would say is that um, the, um, the, you want, uh, you know, there are different ways. I don't want to say how, but generally speaking, I, I like there to be differences. Okay, so, so if, you know, if you're making an album, I would like it so that there is some level of, uh, you know, um, uniqueness. There's something different about every single song and that there, it's not, and that you're putting some level of effort that is beyond, that you're, you're combining it in, in ways that, that um, you're combining the notes of, of both the lyrics and the, the instrumentation together. Now, like I said, a lot, of these, um, a lot of these artists, you know, most of the time they actually don't write their own music. And so you're, you're talking about, um, uh, you know, where there, it's a collaborative effort. And so in this case, you can still get good stuff. In fact, that's how most music is made today in the modern world. And a lot of times it's actually impractical to have one person kind of doing it all because of how, you know, the, the how music is generated today, how it's made with, you know, computers. And so, you know, most people, you're not going to be good at everything, right? So even if you did compose your own song, they probably wouldn't be involved with all of the sort of, they wouldn't be involved with with every single aspect of the of of what it means to make modern music nowadays because you know the mastering and so in that sense actually i mean unless you are a music um you know unless you are really into the the studio sort of music uh, like you're a music producer in that way and then and then you and then i'm sure there are some people who who are like that but Unless you are like that, it, you know, but it's very rare for someone like that to also be a great performer and also be a great singer or, or you know, be able to make, uh, do everything. But I'm, I'm sure it's possible. But when I think of, you know, going back to the question, like, what makes good music, right? We have um, the, the, the songs that we, you know, when we think of music, it's not just the, the music, but it's also the the lyricism right so so it's combined and and sometimes you know some artists you know if you were to classify right like each one into a spectrum and this is something subjective it's something that uh like i, I would probably have a different list than you so it you know it's kind of I, I don't necessarily think that everything is um sort of quantifiable right the, the way it is in mathematics right so sometimes there are some things that are just not you know, it's kind of, you know, we, we, you set your own rules and then you figure out like what is important to you and what, and, and, and so, but you know, when I think of music, you know, I believe, you know, people are asking, so it's 2024. And I was thinking about this because I thought a little bit about how, you know, today we're using what they call generative AI or, or sometimes it's referred to as AI, 
I don't, I don't know, but essentially it's just a computer that's able to, um, in real time, create complex sort of models based on what has happened before. And because, and that's how I would define generative AI. It's not really a, a conscious thing in my view. And, and I don't know, you know what, I'm not an expert, so I'll let the, the computer pundits figure that out. But from my understanding, I'm just giving you my understanding. It is, it's really just, a, it's kind of a trick because it, you know what they call AI is really just the, the computing power. It, it's like a computer doing something a million times or more actually, a billion times and then trying to find patterns and, and put things together in, in a way that is likely to happen based on what's been happened, what's been done before. So anyway, when it comes to music, you know, it's pretty simple if you, to define certain genres, you know, it's to the point where, where we can kind of, uh, we can pr kind of classify music. And so it's something that a computer could be programmed or taught to, to, to understand and to create patterns from. And so, and combine that with language learning models, then it, it becomes something that you could, um, you know, that you could manipulate, right? And, and so in theory, then the question becomes, could a computer make great music, you know, or what I would classify as great music, which is kind of the topic at hand here. And then what I would say to that is that, yes, that um, I, I'm certain that, well, it's already happening, that they can make a competent song, right? But, you know, that, that human touch, and I believe that, um, this is something that I, I guess my theory is that, you know, when it comes to music school, let's say, right? Like we have music school and, and music school, you know, you, people learn uh, about how to, to create, right? When, if you go to music school, like Juilliard or something, it, you, you learn what makes a good sound. Like there are certain theories about music, about melodies, about chord, progressions and all this that that kind of defines what it means to, to make music and what you know what sounds good together and what doesn't based on sort of uh, experience right but the thing is and, and there are you know I, I do believe obviously that would be very helpful right to understand that but then the, the next issue becomes if um, when you know I honestly I think in, in some ways sometimes things are like the rules are meant to be broken in a way. Like what makes great artists, I think is um, a lot of what makes good music is, is not even so much like, yes, you could make a million versions of, you know, a certain, um, uh, you know, of a certain genre, right? Of what we would classify a genre, right? So like classic rock or, um, you know, Calypso or whatever other, you know, we, where you would classify, there are ways that where we have, sort of codified what, what it means to be of a certain genre. But then the thing is, like, I mean, that's one thing, but then you have to do the other thing, which is that I believe, you know, the, the human touch, sort of the human element of music is that sometimes you, you, you make a song and like the, the combination of, um, the combination of melody, lyricism, and, and sometimes circumstance at the same time with, with kind of funny um, social, um, a, a lot of songs actually rely on social sort of um, understanding, right? And this is where the advantage that I don't think a computer could do. A computer could probably make a generic song and it could even sound good based on other songs. But when you combine, a lot of what makes songs funny or memorable is because they make sort of these quirky, you know, they'll make either a, a like they'll make use of social sort of um, ideas that we have, norms. So maybe make uh, an example of this would be like references to something that's happening, right? And so it's something that, it's like an inside joke. You know, somebody who doesn't, you know, um, a lot of music is generational. So when you listen to music from the 80s and 90s, they're making references to things that you're not gonna really understand unless you know the history. Right, unless you know what they're talking about, and so, um, so what's what I'm saying is that um, when we're dealing with um, that that human element is something that I don't think the computer can do yet, and unless the computer actually starts reading, but a lot of it is not even like that's what I'm saying. It's not even something that you can just read about and just know. Like the internet doesn't have everything. 
That's what's crazy about life, right? A lot of the things that happen in life are not documented <laughs> at all. They're like, right? Like there are a lot of it's kind of, I guess what you would call unwritten rules. You know, when you think about our history, right? So much, when you, you talk about the 1900s, we only have a sliver of what actually happened. Do you know that most of the products have been destroyed? Most of the toys that existed in the 1900s, a lot of them were destroyed. They don't exist anymore. And nobody ever documented them. Nobody took a picture of them. We only know what people have taken a picture of or what people have described in books. You know, oftentimes when you think of cowboy, right? We think of like, you know, the Westerns, right? We look at Western movies and what do we see? We see these old movies and we think, oh, well, oh, that's how it was. As if, as if these films, these Western films, like a Clint Eastwood film, was filmed as if that's kind of a representation of what it was like in sort of 19th century or what we would call it the 1800s, right? The late 1800s, which is when these cowboy, the cowboy era, right? The Western era, we would think and we would say, oh, like this is, this is how it was. But these, a lot of these movies were made in the 1950s, like almost a hundred years after. So it can't possibly be accurate. And not only that, but even then, it was, we tend to oversimplify things. So really, the Western genre and the Clint Eastwood movies, they're not 100% accurate. It was probably dingier, dirtier. It was probably, we can only imagine all of the products that they probably had that not all of it actually made it. You know, a lot of it was probably destroyed. A lot of it was, you know, pamphlets and papers that didn't survive, unfortunately, right, to, to our world today. A lot of it... Um, people a lot of things people don't bother to to document and you could uh, I mean I wish that wasn't the case today but it is like even today even things from 20 years ago like does anybody have I mean we have catalogs of like clothing right but the, I'm pretty sure that there are clothes that were worn in the year 2000 right that don't exist anymore and that nobody bothered to document nobody bothered to to keep it or to just store it you know you wear clothing and then you you throw it out, right? And, and, and eventually they wear out, actually. So the unfortunate, they're actually designed, or they're not designed, but they, yeah, they're, well, they're designed to, they're, they're not designed to be worn every day for a decade, you know, and eventually it'll rip up. So uh, unless, you know, you can't, really, you only can preserve something if you rarely wear it or don't wear it at all, which is a weird thing, because of course clothing is meant to be worn. But, you know, that just goes to show how we've already lost history right there. And this is from 20 years ago. Forget about like 100 or 150 years ago. Like we're talking about stuff now that is being lost, right? Or like there are companies, right? Companies that come and go, like that nobody, you know, like, yeah, there's a, a filing. There's maybe a, um, you know, there's a filing there. And like, you know, there's a record of the business, but there's not, a record of everything that happened, right? A lot of it gets lost. And so anyway, so back to music, like, I guess what I'm saying is when it comes to music, what I'm talking about is that generative AI is not gonna be able to document those things that are not documented. Does that make sense? So when it comes to music, there's this other element beyond just what is down written on paper, right? So what makes, you know, when a singer sings a song or when they write a song when they compose there is this magic that happens that is that kind of a, it, uh, they combine you know the lyrics usually combine sort of a social they might make references to social situations or to just emotions or elements of of what it means to be human that's not something that um that would be uh, readily uh, sort of available um, you know, on, on the internet or, or, or in books. And so, so, you know, but like, let's talk about music again. So with music, so I guess what I'm saying, or what I'm trying to say is that music made by humans will still be special. It will still have that magic touch because we'll be able to see and combine things that, um, that normally wouldn't be combined. And I think the, the problem with, um, with, um, with generative AI, for example, would be that it would combine it in kind of random ways, and that's what they call hallucinations, right? Which I don't really have a problem, but to us, it's so glaring and it stands out because as humans, we can just tell kind of what's right and wrong, what makes sense and what doesn't. 
And so um, I guess, but either way, like sometimes we can't tell the difference, right? Like how often do you hear a song and you don't understand what they're talking about, right? So in a way it's like, it might as well be a hallucination. So it, it could still work actually, but there is something to be said about the human element of writing. And, and at the same time, um, so, so yeah, I guess over time, I would expect that it would be good enough. I think if, if a good composer, um, if a good composer could um, like help program and design what the generative AI music makers can do, I'm pretty sure they can get pretty close to making sort of hit songs that are randomly generated. So absolutely, like, yes. So I, I, I think over time it would, but then there's um, the, the other thing, which is the sort of the, the, you know, what I was talking about, the human element and how we're able to, to kind of combine things that normally wouldn't be combined. I think the issue is there's like an infinite number of things that you could do, right? There's an infinite number of ways that you could arrange words. But what humans are able to do and what's so special about humanity is that we're able to sort of pick out what kind of makes sense and doesn't. And just, and we don't just, we won't usually just pick out random things. Um, so we will combine, and we can do this with music as well, where you combine certain musical um, sort of sounds. You might bring sounds together. So many of what we, what we call music and genres, you know, rock and roll, if you really understand it, it was, I think to get people to understand, like a lot of these songwriters, they would actually do things that are, that wasn't done before. So, and things that were not traditional and things that, that a lot of, you know, like rock and roll, for example, where they would combine elements. And, and you know, at the time people were like, you can't do that, that sounds weird. That's not how you, that's not how you play a drum. That's not how you, that's not how you make percussions. That's not how you put guitars together because they were doing things in unusual ways. A lot of these, the, whether it's rockabilly or the other, like different genres that happened in his 50s, 60s and 70s was actually artists doing things in non-traditional way. They, they were putting the violins in ways that a percussion would and they would, they would combine or, or do unusual configurations that today to us sound normal back, but back then they were like, whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing with that violin? What are you doing with, like at the time there was this clash. <laughs> and so that just, it shows you how, um, it shows you how, how music sort of happens and how humans are able to make things. And I guess we are the judge, you know, I guess the, the, comp the composer or the music maker is the one who is kind of calling the shots and realizing, hey, you know what, this kind of sounds cool. This sounds kind of cool, this could work. And, and so much of life, so much of what makes art, art is that willingness to to, to, to go beyond what's been done before. Because a lot of times in order to succeed, you kind of have to think outside the box and do what hasn't been done before. And so it, it's interesting. I mean, with, you know, and that's what makes sort of humans making music. And that's what makes good music in my view. So now when you combine, you know, music is about making good melodies. It's not just about lyrics. Lyrics matter too. And I guess if you want to judge people, uh, music makers, musicians, based on how, you know, how much creativity they have or, or how much they do. If you want to judge people like that, um, it's, I mean, you can do that, but really at the end of the day, we're all going to classify people depending on different metrics. But what I like to do is that I consider, I guess what I define, I, I think that at the end of the day, I want someone who has not just put effort, because obviously, but some level of understanding. It's not just about effort, because you know what? You can put effort into something mediocre, right? If you don't really understand the process, you might put a lot of effort into something and not come out with a great product. And so it's not just about effort. Effort, I don't think, is what makes music great. What makes music great is kind of the, when you combine, when you understand what you're doing and you create a masterpiece that is purposeful, and so whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's something simple, you know, like Nickelback, they tend to make the same kind of, right? It sounds all the same, but, the, but they're different songs, right? But a lot of their songs are so similar sounding. Like some bands, some, some music 
musicians, they're, they're different. Everyone is different. Um, some, of, some of them, they, they tend to make repetitive music, more what you know, some people would term as repetitive, but then there's an art to it. If you, know, if you can do, I don't wanna say, like even though yes, I prefer music that is different, right? I prefer, I actually prefer it if, if every song is completely different, to be honest with you. That's my preference, but at the same time, who am I to say, that doesn't mean that someone, like a band like Nickelback wouldn't be good, because I think they are. You know, they're, they're still, you know, there's, it's actually, in a way, it's an art form that they're able to make uh, so many songs, so many singles that are, that sound very similar to each other, but they're different. And so that's, that's an interesting thing. So they're still great. So, so, you know, who am I to say? So I guess the, the definition, I don't want to define what it means to make music in terms of, you know what, it has to be different. It has to be, every single one has to have sort of, you know, all a, a complex layer of, of, of sounds. And I don't want to say that when it comes to like what makes good music. I don't want to say that because you know what? It's possible for something that's simple to be, to be powerful, right? And it's possible to have something that, it, it, it's, I mean, sometimes complexity is good, but sometimes simplicity could be good too. It just depends on, I don't want to define it in that way. And instead, I want to define it in terms of, you know, the idea that, that you created something wonderful and sometimes it's going to be one way, sometimes it's going to be another, sometimes it's going to be up, sometimes it's going to be down, but whatever it is that you created something magical and, um, and that it, you know, that music is something that, that was shaped by, with intent. I, I think that's kind of, uh, I know some people have tried to define art, but I think that's kind of an important element of art, intent, because if I kind of just do something, you know, if I just throw spaghetti on a wall, like, does that count as art? Like, I don't, you know, but I think if it's purposeful, I don't know, it's, you, but at the same time, like I said, just because, you, you know, you can purposefully do something complex, but not really understand. So, you know, the more you combine different elements and then try, put them together, the more you combine it, the more, the more chances you have of creating something sort of wonderful that sound and this is this applies to music really um and i challenge i guess th there are so many great musicians you know the who um who are able to throughout history who are able to make sort of who, who have created sort of songs that that combine the lyrics with you know when you combine the lyrics with the music and the composition it <laughs> It's just uh, memorable. It stands on its own, right? So many songs that, you know, the, the hit songs, I'm talking, just, just pick any hit, a lot of the hit songs from the 70s, 80s, right? 60s, uh, from all types, where you listen to a song and it's like a universe of its own. And that's in contrast with today, where we tend to sort of commodify, commoditize, and kind of try to make these cookie cutter music. And, and so it's a difference. And I, I guess what I'm saying is that you know, just like writing does not have to, you don't have to write and say things the same way that someone else has done. You know, I encourage you to write in your own way. And so to make good music, you know, try to understand music, try to come up with a framework that, that is yours, and then, and then, you know, make that music your own because your voice is unlike any other and your thoughts and your minds are unlike any other. So make music, an extension of what is going on within your heart, within your soul, within your mind. When music takes on, it becomes an extension of who, of, uh, of who you are, just as speech becomes, then it, you know, that's, that's where the magic happens.